Good morning, Edgewood students. It is 1157, so we have a few minutes before we are actually going to start today. But first and foremost, I want to thank you for being here today. Um, so if you want, we still have a few minutes before we start. Go ahead and send your friends a message letting them know that we will be starting shortly the conversations with Dr. Hernandez. So thank you and we will see you soon. So just give us one moment before we start. Good afternoon, Edgewood. Thank you so much for being here. We are super excited for our, our first ever superintendent student town hall. So on here today, if you have joined us ever through a Teams webinar, there is going to be an option where you're going to be able to communicate with us. So there is a Q&A option on your screen. Um, on here, you can actually ask us questions and we will try to relay them um, and give you the answers via this webinar. Dr. Hernandez will be speaking first, so we are going to have a presentation that he's going to presenting. So I will be monitoring the Q&As um, that are going to be on here on the screen. So um, we will hopefully have some questions answered for you all. So excited to be here with you being in our rooms. And now I will go ahead and send it over to Dr. Hernandez. Good afternoon, Edgewood students, those of you that are out there. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you for this opportunity to get in front of you guys. Uh, I always uh, cherish any opportunity I can get to get in front of students. Um, a lot of you probably don't know this about me, but a long time ago, I was a, pardon my movement here, a long time ago, I was a high school principal for many years. And so um, I really enjoyed that experience and really taught me um, how much I love working for kids uh, and, and doing things that support students in schools. And so I appreciate your time this afternoon. We will try to make it a, a, a good session and to keep you informed. And this is just the first of many uh, town halls that I want to have with you guys. Obviously, right now during the pandemic, they're going to be more virtual, but eventually moving on to do, doing other things, maybe in a park or in someone's neighborhood, um, because really that's that's the kind of work that I like to do. And so we're going to go ahead and start with our presentation. Um, so just like you would in any classroom, I want to go 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 ahead, Miss Ola. Um, I want to go ahead and talk about um, what the the outcomes of today's meeting are going to be, or, or what are the learning objectives? Just like when you're in a classroom. And so before I do that, let me let me say something, guys. We are experiencing a little bit of a of a of a, a lag. So. I may be saying something and I'll hit move forward, but it's going to take a few seconds. So just kind of bear with me. But today um, we are the overview for the day is, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, just quotes from out there and in, uh, in the schools. And as I mentioned, my on my past experience where we are currently in terms of the time, in terms of district, what's happening in the district history of the district. I want to ask you things like, how are you feeling? Do you have any feedback for me? What do you want to know? 
And I want to make sure you understand what services are provided for you um, and how we can help you. And so I'm going to leave some time open for you to ask any question that you may have, and I will make every attempt to answer those. But if I can't, then we will get an answer back out to you. So uh, we'll go ahead and move, move on. So quote of the day, no matter how you feel, get up, dress up, show up, and never give up. I mean, that's pretty clean cut, straightforward. Um, I know right now things are very difficult. I have had private conversations with student groups. Like I know I met with the National Spanish Society from Memorial High School, and I met with other kids that are uh, in athletics and just different groups. And so I'm hearing you. I know it's tough on you right now. Some of us may think that because it's online, you guys are wonderfully happy because you get to be online all the time. But I admire that many of you have been honest and said, well, you know what? I miss school. And, and it's not just the things that maybe us as adults think, oh, well, you just want to be with your friends, which is important. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of you have always have also said, I miss my classrooms. I miss my teacher. I miss going from class to class. I miss, miss such and such and such. I mean, the specific names of people. So I know it's difficult. I can't tell you that I have too much advice on what it's like to go through an epidemic or a pandemic like this. This is new to me too. But what I do know is that we got to get up every day. We got to keep pushing. It's no different than life because someday the pandemic won't be around and we still got to keep pushing. So I don't want to keep harping on that. We'll go ahead and go to the next slide, but let's keep working hard for that. So currently, as I've been saying, things are not the same. When we look at the young lady in the picture, this is what school has turned into. We are online. Uh, we're talking to you from a distance. You're asking us for help from a difference and from a distance. And I know it's not the same as being in front of a teacher in the classroom. And I'm sorry that we're going through that, but this is why we're talking today, because I want to hear how you're feeling about possibly someday, pretty soon, who knows, about how you feel about coming back to school. And so a lot of times I know we talk at you as students. Well, I've, I've always found that students are really smart. And I want to hear your thoughts on what, what advice do you have for me? Um, or maybe you say, no, nah, let's stay the way we are. And so I want to hear and get advice from you on that. So let's go ahead and keep going with our conversation. Um, you know, I can still remember, you know, I've been in Edgewood now three years, getting here a few years ago. Um, and I think this is a, this is a picture from Salsable um, and, and football games. And I know a lot of you have been saying, hey, Dr. Hernandez, I really miss football games. I miss volleyball games. I miss cross country. Or maybe I just miss being at Memorial or at John F. Kennedy or performing arts there in the evening, in the afternoons. I miss all that interaction. You know, when are we going to get back to to where we are or where we used to be. Well, I can tell you, we will get back to some sense of normalcy. And that's what this conversation is about. But we can't do it if you don't play your part. So there's going to be a part of this conversation where I'm going to ask you directly that if you really want to come back, there's some things you need to do to help us out. And so we're going to keep going with this conversation. So really right now, how are you feeling? Um, I don't know, Ms. Olga, if we have any we have seven people, so they want to put interaction. So you can use the Q&A. You know, I'm really interested. How are you feeling right now? Maybe you don't want to answer right now, but through the conversation, you will. Um, you know, we have some services that that are in the district that can help you in terms of whether you're feeling on a high or on a low, or maybe you're not feeling uh, positive about yourself or about your situation. We have support systems in the district that can assist you with that. And so that's part of today. So let's go ahead and keep moving forward um, so I can keep talking to you about that. So the first thing we want you to know is that whether if you come back to work, to school or you're coming through the hybrid models, your safety is our number one priority. But I want to be clear that that is not rest solely on the hands of us, the school district. We can't keep you safe if we don't get support from you uh, as the students in our in our in our schools. But I want you to know what is going on in school to keep you safe, because I don't want to assume and I don't want to disrespect you. You are a mature, you're developing. Part of education in school is to educate you on becoming an adult. And so I want to make sure that we're educating you and that we're letting you know what's going on. So let's go ahead and move on. So the first thing is the personal protective equipment. So we provided masks and personal protective equipment for teachers and students in the district. We've looked at our safety measures, making sure that we've looked at everything from how you arrive to school, what we do when you if you ride a bus, what we do in terms of disinfecting and cleaning our buses to when you get off at the curb, going in through very specific doors, walking in through specific hallways, making sure that we're checking your temperature, 
making sure that things are cleaned and disinfected. And students, you may not know this, but and I want to share this with you. When you're in school, when we, as you're, as some, because some of you are actually in school already, thank the people that are walking around because I'm going to tell you, the flexibility has not just been for students; it's also been for adults. Um, I've had to ask people who normally do things like drive the buses to, to come over to schools and instead help us clean and continue to disinfect. And I will tell you, people in transportation have done that. Um, they've been very like, yeah, sure, Dr. H, whatever we need to do to keep the kids safe. And so I want you to know about those things because being flexible, sometimes it's hard. I mean, we're human beings. We're used to doing things a certain way. But I love that people make the number one thing the number one thing. And the number one thing is you as a student. You're our number one thing. And so these are other examples. Look at the little kid on the left. We bought those bucket hats for our kids in the younger grades. That's additional protection for those students in those grades. And then, of course, for our bus drivers, who a lot of you, whether you're in high school now, maybe you don't ride the bus anymore, but you did when you were younger. We have wonderful bus drivers who really get to know you as a student. And, and I know of bus drivers who bought kids coats when it got cold because they didn't have one or who every day give each kid a little piece of candy and welcome them on their bus. I can think of a lot of our folks that do that. And so again, gratitude is huge these days. And if you don't practice saying thank you, you need to, because the people that are in the district love you enough that they're willing to put themselves out there to make sure that you have an education. And let me be clear, I want you back in school because I think that's the best place to be, but we're gonna do that in the most professional and in the most secure way to make sure that you are getting, um, yes, the best education you can get, but that we're keeping you safe. So let's go ahead and keep going, Ms. Owen. Hand sanitizing stations are, are out throughout the schools. So what you're seeing, students, are pictures from our various schools in the district and offices, because, of course, we want to make sure our adults are, are safe, too. Go ahead, Ms. Owen. Um, there's plexiglass that has been installed throughout the district to make sure we have those added barriers to make sure that we are still continuing to socially distance and also making sure that our people are still able to provide quality customer service to you as a student if you're in the secondary schools. Um, and then, of course, to our, our parents. Um, I know right now we don't have, we don't allow too many people in the building. That is for your safety. But we do want to make sure that, again, that we're putting these things up to help. And so you see examples here from schools and then from the main offices too. Um, Another example, this is small group instruction in one of our schools and elementary schools. Uh, we still want to provide that because we know that's important. But again, we want to keep our student and our teacher safe in these environments. Go ahead. Um, the student isolation room. So let me explain this. These are the rooms that if we had a student that showed up and we took a temperature um, of the student or things like that, and we find that this student may be, uh, may be asymptomatic or has um, or we believe may have the uh, may have COVID-19, then we immediately place them in an isolation room. And there is very limited interaction that students, parents are called. We, we ask the parents to pick them up and take them home. And we disinfect thoroughly that room so that it's back down to basically zero infection. And then if we need to use that later, then we'll use that. But know that these rooms exist in every campus to make sure that when you come to school, we are, you're safe as you're visiting our campus or you're at school. Go ahead. And then, of course, we have uh, floor decals everywhere to sort of help people socially distance. I know in some elementary schools, I've seen letters and shapes. In the high schools, I see the high school decals. So there's all sorts of creative things going uh, that are in our schools. But students, what I'm going to ask you is that when you're in school, look, I know that when you're walking down the hall, you're with your friends. You know, you're walking, you're talking about school, you're talking about whatever it is you're walking, uh, talking about. But I want to make sure that you help us. And the way you help us is by making sure that you are very self-aware of yourself. So if you can carry bottles of hand sanitizer with you, the little ones, wash your hands constantly. You know, I know we tend to want to high five and do things like that. Well, right now,